What is up, guys? Back with another breakdown. It's been a minute. Uh, Gonna try and bring these a little bit more consistently. No promises there, but uh, doing my best. But after watching the Olympics and everybody watching the Japanese women's national team, they were unbelievable to say the least. So I definitely wanted to cover just some of my favorite actions um, that I saw from them offensively. Um, First, starting off with their corner cut on a middle drive. So you're gonna see here, every time they drove the ball towards the middle to either the one side or the two side, there was always a cut coming from the girl that was in the corner. So instead of spacing out, which is a traditional right drive and kick and hope that somebody helps off of a shooter, which in most good defenses, nobody helps ball side off of a shooter. Why not actually put that defender who's kind of responsible for stunting and getting back into an actually tougher situation by forcing her her to try and gap the drive and then worry about her girl cutting behind her. So again, if the help defender decides to go with the cutter, that's gonna open up a lane for the driver to score it. What usually happens like you're seeing here is that help defender's tempted to for a second just look at the ball and she feels like she's gotta help. So she kind of freezes for a second and before she knows it, her girl that was originally in the corner has already slashed behind her. They got this cut so many times, it was so impressive. Um, This was a really, really awesome action that I really like and I'm just calling it, you know, the corner cut on a middle drive. The next part of their offense that I loved came in transition. two concepts that I saw at a transition that uh, really caught my eye. And one of them, I don't really know if it's actually a concept. I have no idea if they intentionally do it, but it is what I'm calling the sacrifice cut on their drive. So basically every time that their point guard had the ball, or whoever it was, was bringing the ball up the floor on a fast break situation. So not just transition, actually. You know, they have a clear numbers advantage. They have a breakaway layup, whatever it is. There was always the person nearest to the ball ran as hard as they could. And again, this is probably just part of their effort because they play so damn hard, but she was running as fast as she could, slashing down the opposite lane line, and then there was always a player that was spotted up on the perimeter. So it almost felt like that player that was running the floor as hard as she could knew she wasn't gonna get the pass. Their defender and whoever's at the rim has to protect the rim first, right? That's what you're taught. You gotta protect the rim first, and then you play the outside. So when you see somebody sprinting the lane and you think that they're getting that pass, It sucks you in a little bit longer, and now that other player that's spotted up on the three-point line has even more time to get her shot off. The next thing that I noticed was they, they obviously, this was obvious, right? They play five out, so there's no rim runner. And it sounds simple, but when you're accustomed defensively to guard the basket, right, using the USA as an example here, if Brittany Griner is used to running back to the block, because typically in the WNBA, you know, there's always a post that's coming up, gonna run down the lane and head towards the hoop, running right, running towards the rim. In this case, there was nobody running to the rim. So when your natural instinct is to run all the way back to the block, but nobody shows up at the block and they actually stop at the three point line, what are you gonna give up? Trail threes adds a little bit of an element of creating a closeout too, right? So defensively, if I go and protect the rim and now I realize, oh shit, actually my girl's still at the three point line. Now I got to sprint under control, which is already tough for post players to do to close out, right? And now the Japanese can all put it on the floor. So now if I'm closing out hard, she's going to go right by me. They're already creating advantages out of transition by running five to the perimeter in their five out offense. Okay, now the next one, I didn't notice this in every game, so I'm not sure if it's a game-by-game decision that their coach makes or their staff makes in terms of tagging up, but in one of the games, I really noticed that they, I felt like they were tagging up on every single possession. Remember how many, they they shoot a ton of threes, right? They're not a high mid-range team, they're getting layups and they're shooting threes. If you watch a lot of these clips, they're using the tagging up principles. Again, there's always sometimes where, you know, they maybe didn't go to the high side or they, they went underneath, right, once or twice, or they nobody went at all and they kind of just started to run back. But for the most part, as I was watching this game, it felt to me, it felt like to me that they were tagging up. Every time, right, most of the players went to the high side after every three-point attempt, they got a ton of offensive rebounds, and then they matched up and were pressing right away. So they either flooded the ball and picked up whoever it was nearest to them, which is the tagging up principles, or on a made basket, they turned and also matched up right there and pressured the hell out of the ball. So I'm not sure, again, if this is actually what they were doing or if they're just naturally, you know, they're just telling their players, go crash and get offensive rebounds. 
while picking up because again tagging up the primary objective of tagging up is to slow down teams in transition it's a transition defensive philosophy with the byproduct of offensive rebounding so uh, i'm not too too sure about this one but i did notice it and i just kind of wanted to point it out all right, the two biggest half-court offensive concepts that I saw in order for Japan to really stay in the game with the big dogs of the U.S. was their ability to get that one through five switch, right? The U.S. was switching everything. They switched their posts onto the Japanese point guard and the Japanese point guard's ability to go off the dribble and to take advantage of that mismatch. They use what I call a boomerang, right? So that's usually when you pass, pass back, and you attack a big in space. So it's a way of just attacking a switch and creating momentum before the ball gets um, slowed down. So, right, if I'm uh, the Japanese point guard, I use a screen, I realize they switched, now I actually get off the ball. So I get rid of it with the matchup that I want now, right? So now Brittany Griner's guarding me, right? I get the ball back, I back up a little bit. As soon as I get that ball back, I am attacking her with speed in space, and their spacing is so good that it forces other people to either help or not help, which you saw Early on in the game versus the USA, they torched them on one-on-one -on -one situations um, with their posts. So they, the point guards, literally the point guard was flying by Brittany Griner, flying by Tina Charles, um, and they tightened that up. The U.S. definitely did in the second half, and that's, you know, at the end of the day, the, uh, the post defense stepping up in that one-on-one -on -one matchup probably was the difference maker. But I love how the Japanese tried to use this boomerang or this uh, concept of exploiting the mismatch um, and creating space in order to drive and create open threes when people overhelped. So the one common action that both the USA and Japan used, um, not just in their games against each other, but throughout, was the effectiveness of slipping and ghosting ball screens. So, But the Japanese posts were also doing a great job of just running into screens and creating angles and then just slipping out of them towards the bucket. And again, the vision of the Japanese point guard is unbelievable. Um, so she was really able to hit them and take advantage of a lot of those slips. And sometimes, though, right like you're guarding the ghost and you're running into the screen and then you just slip out of it that's essentially what a ghost is you're running into the screen you slip out towards the perimeter so a slip is when you're going to head towards the basket a ghost is when you run and you run right by it but you end up on the perimeter remember slip towards the basket ghost perimeter when you ghost even if your girl stays with you most of the time, you've now created a driving angle for your guard. And the ability to kind of confuse and not be predictable um, was really advantageous to Japan. All right, so most teams, when you're going to set a ball screen, the guard will usually... Um, especially in the middle of the floor, switch their feet to kind of force you to use the screen. So now they're opening a driving lane because they're expecting their big to be below to show or to hedge or whatever the coverage is going to be. But now when you ghost and you run into it and you see that guard get ready to kind of force you into the screen and now you slip out as the big, you've now created, right, that big defender has to choose. Is she going to stay with the drive and leave you wide open on the, on the ghost? Or is she going to go with her player who's now leaving? Now that's creating an open driving lane for the ball handler to get to the rim because her on-ball defender has now switched her feet, opening up her stance to allow her to get right to the basket. So those are my uh, my big ones there. I know I don't want to take too, too much time in this video, but those are the big themes that I've seen. Hopefully uh, I was cohesive enough. I was trying to kind of bang through them fast. I know I talk really fast, but uh, hopefully you were able to pick up some of those concepts. Again, the J Japanese Olympic team was so good. USA is so good. You saw their high-low action. I'll just put a couple clips of that right now because their high-low action was absolutely dominant. You could not stop Brittany Griner. They just threw the ball up to her and she went and got it. But they did a really good job of uh, staying calm um, versus the Japanese traps and their aggressive aggressive defense, especially on the pick and roll. And, uh, you know, just being patient and waiting for that high-low, waiting for those duck-ins uh, like you're seeing here. So those are my big takeaways from, uh, from the games. And obviously, I'll probably put some more sets up of other teams that I really liked. Um, and whatnot, but wanted to cover that quickly and uh, give you guys a little bit of a breakdown. So if you did enjoy the video, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, drop a comment on a team or, you know, a league and in any way that you would want me to cover next team, league, player, um, I'm down for it. So see you guys in the next video.